Oh, I have to have permission from you to record it. I don't know how to do that. Oh, well, I'm recording anyway. But All we right. own it. We own it. I'm not going to get off this some bitch. Okay. I, I can't lie this time. <laughs> Look, I, I, this time. Anyway, yeah. okay. so the la this, is, this is our second attempt on doing a video. <laughs> The first time I called myself uploading the fucking video and then I left and it normally goes to my drive and I don't know what the fuck happened, but this time I'm going to make sure I'm not going to leave until it is actually up and it is on there where I can go. You can share it now and you can add it to your, cause I think I can send it to you too and you can add it to your channel or whatever. All right, so this is the Witch of Wanderlust all the way in Los Angeles, California. Yes. And she watches little old me here in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> little old me. I'm, I think I'm getting pretty good at this. You are. I mean, yeah, you're, yeah like it's, I, don't, I can just see like the, the excitement through the videos now. It's not just kind of like, here it is, and then I'll upload it. Now you're just like, here yeah. I am. See, and I said that I was going to stop doing pre-recorded videos because I feel like when I do live video, yes, it is. No, it's, no, baby. They do have it. My daughter trying to order me a frozen lemonade from Chick-fil-A. Now, if I get up and I see the, the frozen lemonade, all you have to do is just like, Scroll down. It's nothing strawberry. Look, oh. let me make let me make my window smile. So I can go on Chick Fil A. Can you still see me? Yes. This is so professional. <laughs> they gonna fucking trip out. That was like they gonna be like, did this bitch just stop doing the whole? Listen, that lemonade from Chick Fil A, that frozen lemonade. If you've yeah. never tried it. Yeah, it'll, all right. It'll make me it'll make me want to do love spells. It is that good. On the lemonade or <laughs> like <laughs> it's good. It's the frozen lemonade. Let me move my screen over here. I think I would. Passion tea lemonade, yeah. Um, fuck you spell Chick-fil-A. Oh no, it's weird. <laughs> Boom, here it is. And I'm not going to even go back and like, you can edit this out of yours if you want to, but this rolling, they're going to see how real it get. Now, my daughter said that she could not find. While you're doing that, you made me really thirsty, so now I'm going to have to go get myself. <laughs> It's so you gotta hold on for a sec. <laughs> no, you're fine, cause I'm gonna find this damn. Mm -hmm. Lazaria, I'm. How you missed it? I told you. They got a pat. It says they got the passion. I don't even see that. How are we on two different motherfucking uh? So down here it is, the strawberry passion tea lemonade. Mm -mm. That's what they have instead now. And that's it. Mm -mm. I want a large. That's just what I do anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you didn't have it on there. So just give me the regular Chick fil A lemonade. Well, DoorDash better get it before I put their ass in the jar. But order my shit and I'm hungry. Like right fucking now. I'm a tyrant. You know, we are foodies and we like to fucking eat. And if we can't That's eat, we don't have problems. And can somebody give me a bottle of water? God damn, I can't get no one. <laughs> I ain't shit. Magic Lake shit. Duchess ain't shit in her house. I don't mean nothing. Not until, not until I've eaten. <laughs> All right. So now that the debauchery with Chick-fil-A is over, so I designed, thank you, dog. did you just roll your eyes? Is my leave over there? Because you give me a headache. This whole situation is now making my head hurt. Why are you giving it to me slow? Like you work for. You can't even talk to DoorDash. You should have a customer service. 
Well, I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna let them know I appreciate that. Order my food like real quick and give me a lemonade. And why your lip gloss over your lip like this? This is how my lips are. So you can't control the lip gloss that you put on? No, that's just how my, my lips curve like that. I'm self conscious about it. I kind of want to get my lips done. That's just how my lips have always been. But you just put it right, right here on the inside. My lips are just like that. So you put it right here and then it just by itself just flip up there. That's my lips are like that. I have weird lips. I want lips like, but my lips are weird. They just do, they're flat and they kind of, I don't know. Well, white people with thin lips, they wear lipstick know, all the time and this shit don't be way up there. Liners and stuff. I'm, no offense. I'm sorry about that. I forget that <laughs> I'm recording. Look, y'all do have thin lips, but that's all right. It's oh, Lord, somebody probably going to get offended by that. All right. So, anyway, I apologize. <laughs> All right, on to the question. What you drinking? I have an Arnold Palmer. It's like peach lemonade and iced tea. Cool. All right, so the Witch of Wanderlust. Tell me in a brief. No, I'm just kidding. My first question. You said it was funny. Do you worship the devil? I do not. I don't believe in the devil. I don't worship the devil either. I do believe that something like that exists with dark energy, but I don't necessarily believe that we have to give you the title of the devil. However, I have nothing against those who do. I think Satanists and people that worship the devil are actually some of the nicest, sweetest people you actually meet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my next question for you is, do you put spells on everyone that you meet? That would be a lot of work, so no, I don't. <laughs> Man, that'd be a lot of work. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, do you put spells on the person that you date? Sometimes, but not in the way that I think a lot of people think I do. What does that mean? Because, you know, when you say, oh, I, yeah, of course I cast spells on people I do. Everybody's like, you make them fall in love with you, you make them do it. And I'm like, no, you know, I, um, I think I cast like a, a money spell on him one time when he needed some money or, you know, like I'll, and I'll oh, ask. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. And, um, this one time, cause he asked me, he was like, have you ever cast a spell on me? And I was like, of course you're dating me. I don't, you know, and, um, but, but, uh, this one time he was working, just like ungodly hours and I hadn't seen I hadn't really like seen him other than asleep in like a week and so I really missed him so I I did this spell to basically just kind of like make him think of me and you know nine minutes later after I had finished the spell he texted me with this photo and was like this was the first day that you've said that you fell in love with me and I was like maha (laughs) (laughs) you know what it's so funny over the last past weekend um I had uh, Candelo Cambisi, I had uh, Professor Charles Porterfield here, and I also had Hoodoo Sam Moise, right? And it, I, we were standing outside, and I asked Professor Porterfield, I said, uh, Chrissy, which is his wife, like, such a sweetheart, and I was like, I have a question. I was like, have you ever put anything on her? And he was like, no, I didn't have to. And then I was like, oh, shit. But I put a lot of shit on my husband. <laughs> To each their own. <laughs> well, well, my husband knows. He asked yeah. me one time, and I was like, yeah. He was like, I felt like you did. I was like, yeah. Remember I used to feed you soup all the time? Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm just playing. It was panty soup. I, I was like, we know what that is. <laughs> yeah, some panty soup, baby. Wear them panties. Stick it in the soup. <laughs> Stirring you mind now. <laughs> you need some? No, I'm good. Go ahead, baby. I know you've been <laughs> hungry. Have, a, have some seconds. He was like, this is some good. I know it is. I know it is. But no, I technically, my husband told me before we got married, he actually said that um, oh, yeah. I needed to do work on him so that I would feel like he's going to stay, that I could. And I was like, Thank you for giving me permission, but I ain't need it because I already hooked you up. Now I was playing. But I was just like. You're like, I, was, I already did. Yeah, I've been on it. But I was yeah. like, thank you. He was like, whatever you need to make you feel like this is real because I'm not never leaving you. 
So, and then I think sometimes, I think he put a spell on me. Because I had never been, I had never been in love before. Not like this. It's like, I literally woke up one day and I was staring at him sleep. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, I don't do, I'm a Taurus. Sometimes we can be very disconnected to like stuff like that. And so when I woke up and I was just like, And I was like, what the fuck? Hell no. I was, like, it's happening. I was like, whoa, whoa. I don't be doing no shit like this. Like, bro, what what you do to me? And he was like, nothing. I just loved you. And I was like, mm-hmm. your mom knew Creole too. Yeah, you probably did some, <laughs> probably did some shit to me. <laughs> but I do, I do not like, I don't recommend that people do spell work on everybody. That no. they date or that they be no. with, cause I I didn't do it to my first husband, and my second husband was a narcissist. So I only thing worked with him was hexing him. Like the love shit just didn't work with him. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what is your faith based system? Do you have one? I mean, I guess I would consider myself agnostic. Explain. You know? So, like I um. Like, I, I believe that there's something out there, but I just don't really believe that it is anything that anybody has, like, put a name to, and I don't really know if I want, like, a name to it or anything, you know? Like, I just, I know that there's other things beyond this, this, and... Oh, how does that correlate with your, with using deities and, and stuff like that? I usually don't, actually. Um, yeah, so I usually don't really use any kind of deities or, like... I guess, because uh, I, I think they're interesting, and I feel like, in my perspective, deities are more like you're calling upon an energy rather than, like, an actual being, but that's just my personal belief, because I know that other people do call upon deities feeling that they are calling upon an actual entity. See, the way I look at it as your personal power is something that you possess, mm-hmm. and that's what helps you to manifest, you connecting the mind, the body, the soul, the spirit, everything is in alignment. That's where the alignment comes in. Right. And I think when you're able to manifest things that way, you're using your personal, personal power. And then when you get into using deities or goddesses or gods, everything is about them. It's not about you anymore. It's about, in a way, you are now working with them to serve something for you. So it's not even you per se, because everything that you're gifting them, are you giving them? It's to, it's to conjure a energy for that particular entity, not you. Right. And I think that, because a lot of people get into this and the first thing they want to do is, you know, who's my goddess or who's my deity? You are. You are your goddess. Yeah. You are your god. You are your own deity. Like, and then after that, then you get into doing your ancestry work. That's what I tell people. Use your ancestors. They're here to elevate you. So right. before you even get into the goddess and the God and the deity, you know, focus on you and get connected yeah. to your lineage, unknown and known. Yeah. Do I have a faith-based system? I have tons of them. I don't think that there's anything wrong with, anything that you choose to make you be great if you're christian and it works for you and your connection to jesus and it's all in all then that's great that's super that's like you should totally fucking do that for me it don't work for me however the concept if the conception works for you then great my biological mother was on drugs my whole life Mm -hmm. and one thing that is she has been on drugs in the last decade, but she's a avid church goer. She like eat, sleep and breathe Jesus to where that's become her new addiction. But if that helped her to be a better person, which I don't think that it has. Well, however, it, it got her off of drugs. So for that part, if that's what she needed to do that for her, then I'm all for it because I think that there's good and positive and, and negative things um, in every facet when it comes to, you know, different belief systems, you know, for us being an African American, um, everybody wants to get into the Yoruba and the Ifa tradition. Well, that's a religion too. 
people typically don't even think that they think that oh it's a it's a risha baby that's a it's a yoruba tradition it's a religion right i don't like conformity yeah i don't like being conformed in a box because i don't want to be all covered up like that i like showing my skin like now you know i like being free i don't like anything that's going to put me in a box of something but i am an occult teacher which means i study it means you have to open up a book and read it all so that i have an understanding of what might be from judaism to christianity to being a muslim to everything because i don't think there's you know most of these religions have four major concepts mm -hmm to love yourself, to love other people, to be compassionate and to give charity. Yeah. All every thousands of thousands of thousands of religion, that's those four things to me. So yeah. I think it all works. I think you just have to do what's best for you. Yeah. My yeah. thing is if, if it enriches your life, it makes you feel like you're a better person and gives your life that like, fulfillment you know that light yeah that yeah have, absolutely then as long as you're not like going around hurting other people like if it makes you feel better that's all that matters did you get your lemonade you can okay no go down yeah did you order my food? Bro, like, I'm going to jump off the foot or off the cross with this. I'm going to kick you Sorry, I forgot again. I, was, I just want my food. I, I just want to eat. Yeah. I'm a tyrant. like, bro, I'm about to get mad. <laughs> like, angry about not eating. All right. So the next question is, what kind of work do you do? And what are you best at at this time? Um... What kind of work? I, I, usually, I just kind of use whatever I feel like I need to use at that moment. But uh, <laughs> I <laughs> do think, you do work for other people? No, no. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, like I like to give advice to other people because it's kind of like I feel like then that puts me in that place of power when I feel like I want them to understand their power. Aww. But also, that's like, amazingly good. Thanks. I like it. <laughs> thanks. But also, you know, like. Um, there is a little bit of in me that's kind of a control freak. So there's like parts that, you know, they'll be like, is this okay? And most of it, you know, is fine. But then there's parts that I'm like, that's, that's just like a hazard in the physical realm. I don't, you know, like there's sometimes that I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> um, I, th I think that's really good. I'm, I'm glad that you said that. Um, I didn't do work and people don't even, I wouldn't even do work for people for a long time. Mm -hmm. It took a long time because I was scared yeah like yeah. i feared fucking up somebody's life i feared not being able to manifest something for somebody else as i would for me because yeah. i'm not the only i'm not the only influencer you are right. and whereas i might be at a hundred percent and i know what the fuck i want to do for you your faith might not be at a hundred percent and that actually hinders me from doing what I need to do for you. But you're not going to look at that because you're looking at, well, I paid you. So I wasn't ready for that. I, hell no, nah, I wasn't ready for that. I had to, I had to mature. So the fact that you can um, say that, that's like refreshing. Cause that's the first thing that people want to do is they want to read a couple of books and do work for other people. I think, I think, when somebody wants to do that, it's either they feel like they're like lacking a feeling of power and that's why they want to do that and or they're greedy. And I, I'm, this I've is never thought about it like that. I like that. Case by case basis for all, you know, like I don't think that that's all of it. it right. Be that they're just like really excited about their passion and they're kind of jumping into something that they don't understand just because they're excited. But most of the time when I find people who don't know a lot of what they're doing and they're just like, yeah, I read a few books. I've been like practicing for like a year. Let me start doing work for other people. I feel like a lot of the time they feel a lack of power within themselves. And because other people view them as powerful, that's why. Mm -hmm. 
No, I had actually was able to order whatever on my computer. Girl, you are getting on my MF and nerves. Okay. No, because I pulled it up myself. Girl, I'm trying to do a video. Get out of here. Order me something to eat. I'm going to go fucking crazy. You want breakfast food? That's not breakfast time. Now, you want to refresh the page. I don't know why I think it's breakfast on me. Your dad is just clearly tripping today. I just want some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> That's all. That's it. I didn't want... A lot. Just wanted some Chick Fil A. Apparently, it's not gonna fucking happen. <laughs> oh no! Can you like Postmates it or DoorDash it or something? That's what she's saying, but I don't get that. I'm just I order myself, girl. Clearly, my daughter don't want me to eat, and she want me to act the fucking fool. That's what she want. I think she is testing <laughs> to see to see where I go the fuck off and yeah. I'm so close but I'm gonna suck it up buttercup I can do this I'm just I'm gonna eat me this spicy southwest salad because apparently they are doing that in a fruit cup and my lemonade because apparently this is the universe saying that I need to eat healthy and not the chicken nuggets that I actually wanted so I yeah. received it I <laughs> totally received that universe I understand you want me to eat healthy cool done i d ordered my shit apparently, <laughs> apparently that's all i can fucking eat so anyway <laughs> they're gonna be like well she was really upset about what was well, uh yes yeah and i'm a Taurus. we you are my balls off, i swear to god <laughs> like i need to eat something. yeah we're, and we're, i'm a Taurus. we foodies like mm -hmm. we all about that life oh yeah um all right, so what kind of work do you think you're best at then? I think sympathetic magic. I really like having something to represent whatever I'm working on just because it just, it, it feels like it ties it so well in the physical realm that it ties it so well in the spiritual realm as well. So I feel like sympathetic magic just works so well for me. Um, and you can and do for it. for those who don't know what sympathetic magic is... It is, uh, it, I'm like, huh, very good. <laughs> it is a form of magic that uses something to represent your current, I guess. I don't want to say target because that sounds like, but I mean, target, you know, like you could uh, use a picture or, um, you know, spell dolls are a really popular way to do that or making like a clay house if you're doing like a home spell or something like that. So anything to represent your current in the physical realm right something that helps with your imagery yes yeah good all right so my next question would be what is a spell in particular that you think that you're best at and why Ooh. Ooh. i like okay so i actually this isn't my like i'm sure that there's plenty of people who do this one but um you can like take a coin and most of the time it's like a penny and you can put what, like, you can make this a good or bad spell, good or bad, of, like, putting, you know, any kind of energy that you want into that, and then kind of being like, oh, I found this lucky penny for you. And so, you know, if you're like, oh, that person really needs just kind of, like, a pick-me-up, you can, like, put in that energy and then give it to them and be like, oh, I found this lucky penny, and it's this cute thing. They're like, oh, thanks. Aww. Or. That's so, look or, at this, so cute. Or. <laughs> you can put too much of all the into a penny and give it to the business that you don't like and you know i like it it might go bankrupt as we have seen i like it yeah That's so it's actually pretty yeah it's it's very very simple but um you know it, it kind of it can it's very versatile so what is your clan your tribe i'm thinking about you saying it about the the bad part of the penny um, so, <laughs> so, uh, you know, there was a person that probably really shouldn't have had a business and was treating employees, uh, as well as me at the time, very badly. And, um, I, I was like all mad and put it all into a penny and then put it 
back into the register, not really thinking about it, but I put it back into the register. That's really good. And about a month later, they went bankrupt and they are no longer there. That's pretty good. I like it. I yeah. like it a lot. So, you know, you can, you can kind of give whatever energy you want through that. And it's such a simple, it, you literally don't need anything except for a coin. That, I like that. Yeah. Look at that. See, that goes to show. Look how sweet and innocent she looked. And look, <laughs> you see, y'all see that? Y'all see how sweet she looked and <laughs> fairy dust? Yeah, and then she say some shit like that. See, that's fairy why you never. <laughs> fairy dust, and I love a palm, a top little palm on them. Listen, this is how people, the <laughs> perception, right? Because people think that, let me tell you, my favorite spell to do is a love spell with apples. Oh, or, I or manifested that. anything with apples. Hmm. Like my favorite, okay, for instance, a money spell, quick money spell, get you a green apple, right? And you can carve it out. Um, you can carve it out, take all the guts and stuff out of it. And then you can get you some coconut oil and some cinnamon and mix it together and then coat the inside of the apple. Then you can write you a petition on the things that you want to happen as far as prosperity and finances and stick the petition at the bottom of the apple. Then you coat that as well with the cinnamon and the coconut oil that you've mixed together. Then you take you one simple little taper candle and you balance it on the inside of that apple. And you let it burn all the way down. What an interesting... Sp I'm, I'm writing that down later. <laughs> She's like... Just FYI. I'm gonna this and I'll write that down. <laughs> <laughs> and you can take um, just a little bit, just a little bit of um, uh, my prosperity oil or any type of prosperity oil and just a little bit in it and like coat, coat the little white taper candle. Doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to really be fancy. You can get some olive oil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't even have to be out extra and shit with it and just like literally the apple is sitting there, the candle's inside the apple and you just let it burn down. And you will see if it has tears on it. You can read it because if it had tears on it, take it out. Cleanse yourself, center yourself, and do it again because you want a clean burn. The cleaner the burn, the better. And then once you're finished with it, you put the top on it. You coat the inside of the top of the apple because you cut it, you know, you cut the little top off of it and you seal it. And then okay. you bury it somewhere. Okay. Very simple. Yeah, simple doesn't need a lot. And right, I'm and this is, it, it, this is like one of the, like if my money get a little funny or my money runs a little, you know, you be like, oh, wait a minute, girl, this is trying to dry up. Come on with it. I would do that. So simple, it's so fast, and you can just bury it somewhere, and it's all about fruitation. And so that's one of my favorite little spells. I love money, and so because people are scared to say that. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm a Taurus. We're materialistic. I love money. So most of my most successful spells have been about money. Mm -hmm. And I also love love too. But, I, love but I will them? look, but I will hex a bitch though. I put that hole in a jar and I bear it <laughs> to the crossroads. Go back that hole in a jar. <laughs> I will. Don't look, don't get it twisted. Remember, don't let the look in the laugh and the kick, kick, kick fool you. <laughs> But that's just one of my little quick, like, to do, it to get it done. Um, what are some of your favorite books to read? Um, it could be I, magical or otherwise. Anything. Yeah. Uh, so I, I personally really like, I mean, I like nonfiction a lot. So I, I love um, anything that can kind of put together the mysterious and the science and kind of, like, unravel some kind of mystery. But uh, I also like philosophy. So there's this book that I read a few years back called The Alphabet Versus the Goddess or The Goddess Versus mm -hmm. the Alphabet. It's an interesting, interesting book. It's about um, how the how the find of um, goddess worship in any kind of civilization, there's more imagery in things. Whereas okay. the, the less, the more they... Um, worship the god there are more literate things and less imagery and it's just kind of like that weird balance of uh the more literate you see 
a culture B, the less the goddess tends to show up and the less like imagery or something, you know, like something visually pleasing tends to go away. And it's more about like the, the alphabet essentially. So it's just a really interesting um, book. And then another quick read is Wicked Plants. That's a really popular, it's a newer book. Um, and it's- Plants? Plants. Spell that. Uh, P-L-A-N-T-S, plants. Oh, Wicked Plants. <laughs> Wicked plants, yeah. So it's all about like the, you know, the dangerous, deadly, addictive plants and just like the lore about them. It's interesting. I like that. Yeah. I think my the first book that I tell all of my students to read in my apprenticeship is The Wish Tree. The Wish Tree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Wish Tree. And I've been telling them about this book for fucking ever. And that's like literally the first book that I, um, that I tell them about is the wish tree. And the author is Catherine Applegate. Okay. Did I write you a Justin? You are right, babe? Yeah. I just, I like hit the, it's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Are you okay, punky? <laughs> so it's, it's like, um, it's about an oak tree that's seen it all. Oh, it's, it's the, where he like asks for the apple and then like builds this house. Okay. Cause I was like, yeah. that's so familiar, but I didn't know if you were referring to Yeah. This. Yeah. That's like, it's, it's, it's probably. It's a sad book. It is like, sad. It's good, but it's so sad. But it's reality though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like one of my like go-to books. Um, okay. So in my next go-to book, like I tell people to read and um, it's called Jambalaya. Jambalaya? Jambalaya. Okay, Jambalaya. What's that one about? Um, this one is like the natural woman's, like her personal uh, personal charms, like practical rituals. And I can't never pronounce her name, but it's L-U-I-S-A-H T-E-I-S-H. Like, I love this book because if you are like open and it gives you like ancient tradition, um, it gives you like stories and celebrations of like her own history and you becoming one in the path or you're first newly getting in the craft and you're um, you're wanting like some rituals to kind of like help you with your intuitive nature. And um, also um, it's like the, it's like a wealth of like new rituals. You're just starting out. You're trying to understand um, especially from a African perspective or African American's perspective on the craft or the pra practice or spirituality. Like, I think that's like a fabulous book um, to get into read. And okay. then um, also that hoodoo book by uh, Sam Moise, um, that book, that's a great book, a hoodoo book. And then, um, and if you're wanting like Wicca or like the lighter side, um, I'm going my Kindle because I got some pretty good books. Like a, Sorry, the, you'll have to spell the, the author's name for Jambalaya again. I it's missed it. It's L-U-S-I-A-H. Okay. T-I-E-S-H or something like that. I can't never pronounce her name, but no, I like her. It. Um, it's a newer book called Glamour Magic. I like that book. Oh, I've read that one. I did like yeah, that one. I like that book. Yeah. I really do. Like, it's a lighter side. And yeah. like, if people are, you know, trying to get on the lighter side, they don't want to get into the dark stuff or whatever, what they consider dark. That's a good book too. And another one for newbies is like, um, uh, that Wicca, um, uh, the herbal spell book. It, I think it's called the book of herbal spells. That's a light book too. If you're into herbs and stuff like that. And that's by Lisa Chamberlain. Okay. So that's, that, those are like some of my little favorite go-tos. And then, um, if you're into really like some tricks and stuff and you know, um, Charles Porterfield got, three books that helps with like stuff. He has like this sports magic group and the sports magic is like for the working girl, you know? Yeah. Girl trying to get a little coins, the little dancers. He, I would check him out cause he's good with them kind of books. But anyway. Those are some good recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause I never really talk about a lot of the books, but those are really good. And then it's another one that I read the other day and I thought it was so cute. Hold on. Uh, 
Uh-uh, how much is it? Uh, look at my purse. I'm sure I got $10 in her. She just been here all this time. She's been just $10. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, she just recorded too. <laughs> all right. So, um, look, I have books that edibles. We ain't, I ain't gonna recommend that one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's legal here. So, <laughs> um, 30 days of healing. It's not necessarily a magical book. But it's a really good book about healing. Okay. And his name is Paul Richards. So, okay. So that's a pretty, like, those are like some really, like, go-to books for me if you're wanting to, like, I guess, that's just, that ain't I guess good, like, people. huh? Sorry. I know. I was just saying that those are like some really good, like, you know, if they read a trial. Yeah. yeah, just you know, getting into like foundation books. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think my my favorite, I guess one of my favorite books that I I picked up that was like my first like magic or witchy book, I guess would you you'd say um is the Moon Spells book by Oh yeah, yeah is that I, the black and white book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't um Diana because she yeah. Let me look at my camera. Um, yeah. love love that book just because she she gives really good advice on that, like, kind of like how how that works and then I'm reading this other book um I I just opened it it's called DIY magic actually and uh-huh. I'm only I'm only like 15 pages and I'm not very far but uh the way he describes it is really like I like it a lot because it's not something it's so much easier to grasp the way he describes everything and one of the things that he says in the book is saying trying to describe magic to somebody who doesn't understand it is like trying to describe an ocean to somebody who's never seen more water than what's in their cup. And I was like, that is exactly what it feels like. That is exactly what it feels like. And I really, really liked that quote. So I'm definitely going to have to keep reading that one. But the other one too is a good one. Um, Actually, um, it was the first book that I and I read this book like a while ago. What was it like? Modern day witchcraft? Modern witches? Yeah, I don't know if that let me see. Oh my back. By Scott, whatever it is, it's modern day witchcraft or something. Her name is Scott Alexander. Alexander. Oh, oh yeah. She's got yeah. a girl. Or, I, st- I don't know. They they Whatever, um, that person has a, a few different books, actually. Yeah, it, I think it was the first one that she wrote, and it was like Modern Day Witchcraft or something like that. That was like the first book that I had checked out from the library, and I never took it back. It's mine now. I probably need to cut them a check for that book. But anyway, those are some good books that we've given them now. I'm telling them that I took a library book a long time ago. But anyway, um, <laughs> what do you think, what do you, oh no, what do you do in your day on time? Do you have downtime? I don't either. Just kidding. Um, I. What are you? Are you using this? Do you need this? Do you have both of them? Uh, no. So mine. Yeah, I almost stole yours. Um. That was normal. <laughs> I need my charger. Can't change the charge. I know you're doing a video. That, um. I just really yeah. need to charge. Or charge right now. Yeah. Um, so no, my downtime, I usually like to, uh, I mean, I, I'll hang out with my friends. I have friends. Um, <laughs> and I like to, and I like to so all y'all sit around bonfires and stuff with your black capes and brooms and shit like that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we, I, I, I mean, we like, we like doing bonfires on the beach, but it's definitely not as like ritualistic. <laughs> that's the dream though. Um, but yeah, I like to do like a little bit of gardening. I mean, like my little mini garden out on my porch and I like to draw, like I like to paint, like those are mine and craft and stuff, but I just like to make things, you know? I, I, I do to- too. I do too. I do a lot of creative things in my downtime. I don't have that much, but uh, what I do, because I, I feel like if I'm not creating, I'm not growing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm not doing anything new, that's why I have like damn near 30 fucking oils and all this other stuff that I made because I'm always thinking, what can I do that's better than what I just did? Mm-hmm. Not in comparison to anybody else, just trying to be a better me. 
and yeah. kind of figuring out what that means. So my downtime is a lot of reading, half ass sleeping, and creating. Half ass sleeping? Yeah, because I, I go to sleep, and I'm sleep two hours, and I'm up. And then I have to, like, force myself to go back to sleep. Oh, man. No. I just, like, toss and turn a lot. You and know? then if my husband's in a bed, <laughs> sounds like a bear. It's like... Oh, no. It's like, just give me some z -Quil. If I do z -Quil, I can sleep at least four hours, which is a lot for me. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not a... Anything... Any, uh, a, a fucking rat can piss on cotton and it'll wake me up. <laughs> You're like, who's doing that? <laughs> Is it a rat pissing on cotton? I think I hear a rat pissing on some <laughs> 127 miles away. I know a rat is pissing on cotton. Stop work. <laughs> Stop it. I need yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is your favorite or what is the best piece of advice that you could give any newbie, witch or practitioner or whatever they call themselves with so many different names? What would you like any newbie, like six months to a year? Like what, what, what advice would you give them? Research everything and document everything. What does that mean? Document? Cause they don't, they act like they don't understand what that means when I say it. Well, I mean, write everything down. So anything that you feel like made an impact, even a little thing, you know, like if you said, oh, I asked the universe or whatever that for a confirmation of this and this immediately happened, write it down somewhere, you know, like just like in a journal, it doesn't have to be pretty or like take note of it in your phone. Um, you know, oh, I keep seeing this number somewhere, write that down and then research it later or, you know, like write everything down that you feel like is important. It does not have to be important to anybody else, but just like write it down. And, and sometimes it, it doesn't even have to make sense at that time. Either. Yeah. No, like if you feel like you're like, I, I'm, you know, cause I've been seeing spiders everywhere recently. I wrote that down. I have no idea what that means, but it's something that I've noticed that I just right. think is really interesting and it might make sense later. Right. Or if you do any spell work, whether you are just beginning or not, write it all down. For God's sake, please write these things down. <laughs> because you, you I, it's like when, I, when we talk about creating, mm -hmm. I can do, I can like, okay, I'm in a store and I buy all these feathers. I don't know why the fuck I bought all these, those feathers, but I bought those feathers because I saw them and my spirit was like, get it. Mm -hmm. Um... I might not do nothing with them feathers for two or three months. And then I get this wild hair on my ass. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do some more. Because um, I used to do like the, the chicken foot and rooster foot. Like I spray paint them, decorate them, hot glue stuff to them. And I create these wonderful pieces of protection because that's what they represent, protection. So I totally get that. And just to let you know, uh, spider represents feminine energy. Oh, well. It also represents creativity, patience, and strength. Um, okay. It also invites you to become more receptive and intuitive and rely on your unique gifts to get you ahead in life. I like that. They've literally been. So if you're seeing that, then. Everywhere, Duchess. <laughs> maybe that need, then maybe that should be, or maybe it's a reminder, or maybe it's your spirit team telling you to maybe hone in more on what you're doing, or maybe it's time for you to grow past, um, to grow past where you think you are. Yeah. Maybe it's time for you to elevate and dig deeper. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, it, it, it always means power and growth. They've Nothing been in else. My just, bed. They've been in my hair. Like, they've just, like, in places that I'm just like, I know you weren't there. You just, you know, like. But, so what are you doing with them when you get them? I'll put them outside. I'll be like, thank you. Oh. <laughs> See, that's the difference between the lighter and the not so light. Well, I had I would take them so, and put them in jars. <laughs> so I have a I had a fairy garden that I was making with some of my friends, and um, one of the little bobble mushrooms had I a box coming too. Two of them nuggets and some egg rolls blind me. Thanks. Caving on those nuggets. Yeah. No, I I, well, I had to get them from Jack in the Box for my granddaughter. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I had to kill a black widow earlier, and I was really sad about Did it. Did you but keep it? 
No, I, I had to, I killed it. Well, because there was like egg sacs and all that stuff, and I was like, I can't have a black one. Uh, I would have killed that bitch and put it oh, in yeah. a fucking jar. Jesus. And the next time, a motherfucker, ooh. You were like, <laughs> Like, bitch, I got some for you. Oh my God. I didn't even see that. Let me tell you a couple of my wig babies. Let me tell you what I do. <laughs> I, you know, I like to jar them up because I mean, you never know when you're going to need one. You never know when somebody running their fucking mouth and we need to weave their shit closed because they're <laughs> talking too fucking much. <laughs> Excuse me. See, these are called wet babies. Okay. So I ain't throwing away shit. And this is a snake. Oh, pretty. See, I keep stuff. I mean, not. These are gifts. Yeah. And this is an octopus. Oct oh my gosh. That's there's cool. Mag there's magic in everything, dear. <sighs> I guess that's just a little <laughs> of me. I'm like, oh, my little wet babies. Oh, I need a spell. You want to act like a snake, bitch? <laughs> Get one. <laughs> Uh-oh, let me stop. And that means your, your tribe, they're going to be like, see, you had this dark lady on here talking about all this evil stuff. No. They should I, know better. I think that the one thing that I love about the craft and I love about the pad, and it makes me happy and I get excited always talking about it, is that you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. Yes. Yeah. And you can be like a fucking chameleon. You don't have to be, or you can like, cause you can, I came into this not wanting to do any kind of dark work. Mm -hmm. Cause my mom was a dark worker. I think a lot of people do. Yeah. A lot and of I just, I ran away from that part. Like I fought to like not, cause I didn't know that there was a balance. And when I first got started doing it again, I really, I was loving Wicca. Yeah. Because it was lighter and it's earth based and it's oh, oh I love the earth based yeah I I, yeah. Was, I love Wicca I think it's such under, beautiful I do too and so I had to learn my balance in between so just yeah just that part yeah. um so you said study and read that's your best piece of advice for the newbies yeah and document everything mm -hmm. and write that shit down write all of that shit down absolutely because you might want to go back to it and try it again. Exactly. Or, you know, figure out what did and didn't work and that part. Yeah. All right. So what's the best piece of advice that you would give me? That I would give you. Yeah. That one's hard though. Cause I feel like you would be giving me advice much more <laughs> than I would be giving you advice. <laughs> hey, everybody have an opinion. I'm actually, I'm actually asking yours cause most times it's unsolicited. <laughs> yeah, they're like, let me tell you something, and you're yeah, like, yeah, what you need? To, no, first of all, we're about your fucking self, bitch. I didn't yeah. ask you. To, I didn't ask you nothing. You don't even have your shit together. I don't know. It's really hard to give advice to somebody that you look up to, you know, because then you're like, you know, it's kind of hard to do that. Do you really? Of course, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm blushing. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> That was like when you messaged me and you were like, let's collaborate. I was like, and I like ran to Alex. I was like, guess who just, like uh, when I got off the phone really? with you, I was like, guess who just, guess who I just got off the phone with? Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. I guess I'm, I'm working on this. I, I don't, I guess I don't be thinking that, um, I know that I'm impactful, but I don't think like, I'm just like the end all to be all and I just know, cause I'm, I learned through trial and error. Yeah. And so same. what I try to give people is like the trial and error. Like, sis, you might not want to do it like that. Cause I mm -hmm. did it like, but you could try because you might have a different result. But right. this is what how I see it and how I did it. And mm -hmm. maybe you can figure out a way in between. Cause I think that's what all of this is, you know. But I appreciate you saying it. Thanks. I really yeah, do. Of course. My thing for you is never let them see you sweat. See what? Never let them see you sweat. Like anybody, because... Never. Because, <laughs> because if they think that they have found a weakness, they will try to nail you to the wall with it. So never let... Even if, even if you know this bitch and pissed you off, 
and you really want I wouldn't I would not give it that kind of energy not publicly yeah. now of course when you in your own zone you be like I'm pissed do do this bitch in but never let them see you sweat like that's the best piece of advice I can give you I think they're gonna come at you they're gonna have opinions they're entitled to that because technically you're a public figure yeah so there's a necessary evil that comes along with all of this but it should uplift you not drain you yeah yeah still trying to figure out that uh that balance but i'm working on it well baby the higher that you get sweetheart they will come at you even harder but what you have to remember is you'll be here when they won't so what do you do now that to make it stand for something mm -hmm. My platform, since I first started, you know, a few years ago up until now, it has not changed and it never will. Yeah. I don't let people be concerned about what my past and what my, we all have one. Right. We've right. all done fucked up stuff. Yeah. The only difference between mine and yours is mine public and yours ain't. But it's a lot of people that got demons inside them, real life, that don't deal with them all. Mine yeah. are out. I work with them. We do spells together. <laughs> we do See, spells that's together. The goals. You're like, I already, I worked my demons, and now, now we're friends. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You have to be able to name what it is. Once you can identify what that is, then you can use it because that's what your enemy is gonna do. They're yeah. going to identify what that is, and they will use it. So you beat them to the fucking punch. You yeah. can't bring up no skeletons in my fucking closet because I already do bone work with them. I need, <laughs> I need like Lady Duchess quotes all over my journey. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm just being for real. Like you can't make me feel bad about some shit I've already processed, digressed, and moved the fuck on from. Are you serious? Yeah. Because that one thing that you think that that's a weakness of me, like my criminal background. Mm -hmm. You're talking about something that happened a decade ago. Yeah. I'm not even the same motherfucker that I was a decade ago. Who is? And if yeah. you are the same person that you was over a decade ago, bitch, you need self-love, self-discipline, self-help, and you need some dick. Because clearly you ain't getting enough of that. Because you, <laughs> you need to come. Maybe that will make you feel better about your life and give you some more energy. See, I take my, I take my orgasms and manifest with them. And if you're not doing that, sis, your mind isn't on the right thing. Yeah. You have to use it. That's the whole point of what magic is and what the occult is. It's using like, everything yeah. that's around you, even your past. Mm -hmm. That's just like a motherfucker say, well, she put, she fucked four of niggas and you right. And I only came with three. It's out there. You can't <laughs> even make, you can't make me feel bad about nothing. You just, you can't. Mm -hmm. For women, when she, she, she used to be a hoe. So, so did the nigga that you sleep with, and he's still a fucking hoe. So you mad at her, and you yeah. fuck one every night? Yeah. Like, at least she's dealt with her shit and she's moved on. You're still wallowing with swine, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be better than that. So that's my piece of advice to you. You take that shit with a grain of salt. Yes, it's going to hurt. It do hurt your feelings because you're human. But then you look at everything perspective, and you go, okay, that's how you feel about me. That's fine. Now I know I can stay my pretty ass over here and deal with my tribe and you can stay your ugly bell pepper nose, uh, wrinkle forehead ass over there and, and, and be struggling <laughs> because, and be unhappy because happy motherfuckers don't do shit like that. No, they don't. So you sit over there, bitch, and you figure out why your life is so fucking twisted and chaotic and I'm going to stay over here in peace. Because you can't take away my peace because you don't have none. So you don't even know how to identify what peace is and what happy is. That's why you keep shit going all the time. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn how to put people in it. I am the queen of reeds. Please don't come for me because I got you. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. I know. <laughs> like, don't do that, bitch. Let's, let's all be copacetic, bitch. Let's focus on good stuff, <laughs> positivity, and high vibrations. <laughs> let's not get off all into the other stuff. Cause I'm gonna read your ass for filthy. I'm gonna come right back over here, and I'm gonna still be me. And ain't nothing gonna change. Yeah. Don't nothing change with my goddamn stomach size when I eat. Sometimes my shit a little bit more flatter than other times, cause I got more food. Like now my shit flat. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm hungry. And then too, don't 
And then too, don't take it personal. Don't take nothing personal. Because it's all business. Yeah, sure is. Don't take nothing personal. It's all business. And what I mean by that is even bad publicity, bad comments, bad thoughts, bad all of this shit, bad videos about you, whatever it is, it's still publicity. Yeah. Because either one or two things going to happen. They're either going to watch you to see what they was talking about so that they can formulate an opinion on their own or they're not going to fuck with you. And if they're not going to fuck with you, they weren't going to fuck with you anyway. Yeah. So what did you lose? Nothing. You gained something, if anything. Boom. Do you know how many people that have done videos and talked about me? Do you know how many clients I've gotten from them? <laughs> you want to talk about my criminal background? Check it out. First of all, I don't have a criminal background. It shows that it was open, but it, 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 I, I was never convicted. Mm -hmm. So don't talk about me. Ask me how I did it so I can help you get, get out of a situation too. Yeah. So do you know how much money I have made off of criminal stuff just because they opened, they, they opened the door to talk about that? Keep on talking about it, sis. I'm, listen, honey, you go right ahead. Tell them all, bitch, because they going to book an appointment with your girl so I can get them out that shit too. How about that? That's owning who you are. You don't let these you don't let grandma say something you don't let them <laughs> like that you just don't ain't nobody ever gonna like everything you don't like everything you do too it's sometimes i see the words coming out my mouth and i see how fucked up they are and i'd be like damn oops <laughs> damn that came from somewhere <laughs> like damn fuck that come from but it's all growing you're human yeah. Everybody ain't gonna like you. Everybody ain't gonna be receptive to you. Everybody ain't gonna love who you are. And then some people, they're just a fan. They're not your friends. Yeah. They just want to be around you because you're popular. Mm -hmm. But let some heat get on you. Them motherfuckers gonna uh, uh, draw up like some fucking bacon and grease, girl. They just go. So that, that's my piece of advice, girl. You take this shit with a grain of salt. You know, don't, you know, I always support those who support you, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and never stop working on you. Don't ever think that you know everything. Don't ever be in this position where you can't be taught anything. Because I'm forever the student. You know, I'm forever the student. Because one day you'll be an elder, too. I... One day one day you will. I would be so sad if I felt like I knew everything. That okay. Would be boring. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was such greatness that I had around me over the last past weekend. And I don't want to keep saying a name like I'm just name dropping like a motherfucker, but they poured into me and I was quiet and I listened because they're my elders and they're people that came before me. If mm -hmm. it wasn't for people like them, me and you wouldn't even have a platform. Right. It yeah. Even exist. Yeah. So it's all about respect and, and, and just keep going. I can't wait till you get to 100,000 views or followers and 200 and a million. Somebody needs to do it. We don't have a million uh, uh, occultists that's on YouTube. You be the first. Man, well, I'm bringing everybody else with me. I can't do that alone. Hey, and that, that's all this is about. You said the most perfect thing. It's not just about me. It's about opening the door for other people because how I come in the door might affect the way somebody coming behind me might be able to come in. Yeah. So I, I'm always very cognizant of that. Um, I'm always very humble of that. So if people want to get in contact with the Witch of Wonderless, how do they do that, sweetheart? Um, I'm very active on Instagram. So you can go ahead and you can either DM me, even though it's very difficult for me to get to everybody immediately, but I will try. Um, my website is thewitchofwonderlust.com and there's forums on there so you can talk to the community too and you have oh, to show me how to do that that is so interesting yeah I love it I love it because it's like our little own piece of the, the internet and you know only people who want to be there are there and uh, yeah. it's it's nice so I'll, I'll show you how to do that and um, I, I do read all of my comments on YouTube so I go through and try to com like comment back and I do too yeah. 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 Um, and then on Instagram, you can also like post photos and stuff. And if you hashtag it Wonderlust Coven, then I see those as well because it's really cool to see people doing their own thing also. I love it too.
And for me, most of you guys know it's MagicalLadyDuchess.com. That's how you can see my online store, how to book readings and stuff with me, spiritual work and everything else. And it also shows you my, um, it also shows you my, um, my actual physical store that I have here in Dallas. So MagicalLadyDuchess.com and The Witcher Wanderlust. And I'm on Instagram too. Now, yeah. I don't know what my Instagram, hold on, Chad. I don't know what my Instagram name is. I think is. it's Magical Lady Duchess. Is it? Yeah, let me double check. Look, I'm talking about, is it? <laughs> Come on, I don't fucking know. Yeah, Magical Lady Duchess. Boom, see? And if you hashtag Magical Lady Duchess, um, it'll actually, I get to see those too. So I love this. I love you. I think this is great, even though I'm, I'm getting ready to eat because shit. <laughs> but I love you and I appreciate you. And I thank you for looking up to me, I guess. Like, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I appreciate that. Like, yeah. I do. This is how we keep it going and we teaching people real stuff. Exactly. Not like some shit we didn't Googled and like Pinterest and shit. Right. Pinterest. You know, it's a bunch of Google and Pinterest witches out there. Oh, honey. They are spe Pinterest fell down. Somebody told me to do a Pinterest page and I was like, no, I don't know. Okay. I have the, like my blog posts on Pinterest, but not really like spells. Oh, baby, you, you'd be surprised. <laughs> what I used to let, like when I first, because I have a, a Facebook group, Infinite yeah. Energy, and it's a lot of folks that came through my groups over the years because my group ain't new. My group is an old group. And I would delete two and 300 people at one time. At one point in time, it was so much stuff that was posted, like the witch memes. And I was like, hey, stop posting this shit in there. This is about education. I don't want to see that shit. I, this ain't the key <laughs> Yeah, I was like, girl, where's y'all getting this shit from? And they were like, Pinterest. <laughs> I love me a good witch meme. I'm not going to lie. That's my guilty pleasure. Some of those are hilarious. They're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they are. But they yeah, are. Not, not the place to post them, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, not, not all the time. It's nothing wrong with a key, 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 but I'm like, God damn. Yeah. You're like, you're in here to learn, not to laugh. Come on. I mean, you can laugh. I'm because I think I'm funny, but balance, people. Balance right. Yeah. The word. Creative balance, please. So anyway, I love you, sweetheart. I appreciate you. Thank and you. I am going to make sure that this video is uploaded because we are not doing this shit again. I like if this we are, one. This one felt good. I think, I think the universe is going to be happy with this one. I think so, too. 